This is a CGTN exclusive. This hasn't been exhibited anywhere, or and very few, few people have actually seen this. Exactly. It was just recently completed, and uh, also the first time where I have my calligraphy inside the hand scroll with the photography. Oh, that's beautiful. I am Michael Cherney, a photographer and artist. I grew up in New York. I had first started, my father had done some trade with Asia, so I started language thinking I might do business, but I very quickly realized I didn't have the mind for it. But I loved the language and I loved the history. And began studying Chinese language and history at university there. I first came to China over 30 years ago and have called Beijing home for most of the years since then. Hey, good morning! I'm so How sorry are you? Oh, don't worry at all. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. You're good. Okay. We picked a good day for it. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So you haven't done much of the mountains around Beijing, but do you know where we're, we're heading today? Yeah, this one was just uh, recommended by a friend. When I went on to see the satellite imagery on the computer, it looks like there's potential for some really nice visuals. Through my art, I try to combine photography with the themes, formats, materials, and aesthetics usually associated with classical Chinese landscape painting in a way that feels natural. When it comes time to photograph a specific subject or location, to truly integrate past with present, it is first necessary to study paintings, maps, and texts to gain historical context. With that knowledge as a jumping off point, I then transition to very contemporary processes. Utilizing online satellite mapping, I work from home to determine the GPS coordinates of locations that allow for photography of desired sites from the most ideal angle, and then work backwards to determine if the location is accessible by road or, if not, possibilities for getting there on foot. One cannot know what to expect in the field, but the research is critical for getting close enough to allow for improvising the rest of the way and being free to accept what nature has to offer. My grandfather was an accomplished photographer with the New York Daily News, but he had died when I was very young. Just around the time after my illness when I was searching for a path, a book was published about his photography which inspired me to give photography a try. My photographs are shot on film, usually 35 millimeter. After the film is developed, I search for elements within the film frame. Other than cropping, the content of the photographs remains unaltered, thus allowing for nature's true expression. Come on in. Thank you so much. Sure, welcome, welcome. Wow, your house is wonderful. Oh, look at all this space. I still shoot my work on film, and a very important reason for that is the graininess of the photos, because I take little excerpts of a photo and enlarge them mm -hmm. to kind of lose the sense of perspective and get a little bit close to a feeling of classical painting. Mm -hmm. Film cameras don't have the little screen, mm -hmm. so you don't know the result you got. You have to kind of really focus, be 100% in the moment, make sure you got the right 
photo. Take this mm -hmm. and you just pick any image and you look through. You'll see how sharp it is, the detail. Put it right up against oh, wow, there. That's incredible. Most of my images are black and white. The kind of the rule I learned from the beginning was that if the color information is important, then I include mm -hmm. color. Otherwise, keep it black and white. It makes it a bit easier to be consistent across the, um, a series of images. And it also has a bit more drama. Photography is usually just that straight rectangle that we never seem to be able to break out of. Um, by having a rhythm, a narrative feel in something like a folding album or a hand scroll, it really makes an image feel more like a story. And so and that's what it was in the old days. Hand scrolls were like the movies before movies. <laughs> and so I experimented with how to combine those formats with photography, but in a way that felt natural. This is your calligraphy. Exactly. And it's actually, so this area also, this part of Hubei, is mm -hmm. mentioned in the Chu Zi, the Song of the South, one of China's earliest collections and most important collections of poetry. And um, I try to use some characters drawn from the poetry in the Chu Zi that talked about this area. And so um, essentially talking about how our feet and the wheels of our car or cart, as it would be in those days, <laughs> would, get, would get caught in the mud going from view to view. And I actually took some of the mud from there, mixed it with a little bit of, no of uh, glue to make uh, the seal, the starting seal, with my thumb like that. Print the photographs onto paper that is usually used for ink painting, which results in some loss of detail, but a more timeless feel. The prints are then mounted using traditional methods and craft, as either albums, hand scrolls, hanging scrolls, fans, or other formats. Now it's going to start to get noisy. Hand scrolls and albums are my personal favorites, yeah. as they add a sense of rhythm and intimacy. One can sit with the work or share it with friends, unrolling or unfolding as if reading a poem. The, uh, the printing stage is the most challenging. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Looks okay. It looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we'll bring we'll bring uh, some of these things to the mounter. Here you can see the. Oh, look at this, a studio right in your home. And <laughs> that's <laughs> 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 The amazing thing about the wonderful qualities of Shram paper is that when you that ink absorbs into the paper. As soon as it dries, it sets, and even getting it completely yes, drenched like this, the ink doesn't move. I thought it, doesn't it would run. run. Yeah. So the brushing out all the bubbles. Yeah. Oh, wow, to the wall? Yeah. Very quick. Almost reminds me a bit like a pillow. Just let the paper and the paper leave the wall and get out of it. But this way, when it dries, it dries evenly. So when it dries, it dries evenly.
，给我讲起这中国的典故啊，然后这些古诗词啊，我自叹不如。反正还还得学一辈子的事儿，然后每次来这儿我也能学到不少东西。嗯、Studying classical paintings over the years has helped to train my eye. To try to recognize that subjective moment when clicking the camera shutter will capture a view that evokes the rise and fall of the ten thousand things, yet also allows the viewer to connect to it as something real, something that did or still does exist. There's a long tradition in China of traveling to places that have accumulated a great deal of cultural memory. To connect with what has come before, and then feel yourself to be part of that story. China is unique as a place where the thread of the art tradition has remained unbroken for millennia. It has given great comfort to me to share a sense of kinship and community with artists, scholars, and travelers who existed long before our present-day geographies and identities, and to connect with nature, which bestows its gifts in equal measure to all. <laughs>